in-depth topics affecting Black California and our communities around our great state. Uh, thank you for your work, and I congratulate you, and uh, keep it up. I'm Assemblymember David Chu, representing San Francisco, immediate past chair of the California API Legislative Caucus. And I wanna thank our amazing ethnic media organizations. During this incredibly difficult year, this pandemic and recession have shown a bright spotlight on the continuing inequities facing our diverse communities. And ethnic media has been a critical lifeline to Latinx communities suffering the highest rates of COVID-19, to our API communities subjected to unprecedented levels of anti-Asian hate, to non-English speaking communities hammered by unemployment and lack of language access to basic services. As always, ethnic media has come to the rescue with information, sharing our stories, our struggles, our histories, advocating for all of us. And so to all of you who've been working around the clock, toiling mightily with little staff on a vast myriad of issues, we honor you, we salute you, we are grateful to you. And we look forward to our partnership together as we continue the fight to lift all of our communities up. I would like to congratulate all the nominees and awardees. The need for ethnic media in our nation has never been as important as right now. Your focus on providing truth and reporting and ethical journalism to help communities of color better understand issues of the day is eternally vital today. Thank you for all the work you do for the multicultural communities across our great state. Hi, I'm Sydney Kamloger, state senator for the 30th California Senate District. I am vice chair of the California Legislative Black Caucus and the only black woman in the California State Senate. And I'm here to say thank you. Thank you for sharing and telling our stories, stories of people of color and keeping our stories on the main stage. Last year, we saw an explosion of all different kinds of media and all different kinds of stories. Last year reminded us of how colorful our palette is when it comes to people of color and stories that truly make a difference. I cannot tell you enough how exciting it is for me to pick up a paper, to stream something, to turn on the television and see folks who look like me, my son, my daughter, my husband, my grandmother, and to know that those are authentic stories being told and elevated by journalists who care. So keep up the good work and just know that I am right behind you. On behalf of Mercury Public Affairs and the many voices in California that understand the role that ethnic media plays in truly reaching out to all of California, uh, we want to join you today in this important celebration of the role that ethnic media plays in California. Uh, congratulations, uh, because without ethnic media, we really would not be reaching out to all of Californians. You know, gone are the days when African Americans, Latinos, Asian Americans, Native Americans, um, and people of different nationalities are ignored in this state. Today, California becomes the most culturally rich and the most diverse state in the country. And without ethnic media's role in making sure that every voice is counted, that every voice is heard, then people would be left behind. I know firsthand from the work that we did in the 2020 census count, the role that ethnic media played in making sure that at every corner and every turn in zip codes that many people refused to enter, if it wasn't for the role of ethnic media, we would not have had such a successful 2020 census count, which has a dire impact uh, in the future of California. And so congratulations to ethnic media and the role that you play in California. It's truly uh, a blessing to work with you and to say that we are family and to say that without you, California wouldn't be the same. Thank you and congratulations. Welcome to the California Ethnic Media Awards, celebrating the work of hundreds of ethnic media journalists across the state. We open tonight's ceremony with a welcoming remarks by Governor Gavin Newsom. 
Uh, it's Governor Gavin Newsom here. It goes without saying that every minute, every single day, close to half of the people in our state read, listen, they watch the news in multiple different languages. Ethnic media has quickly become an increasingly indispensable bridge for communicating with the diverse populations within our state. You know, tonight I'm excited to open this awards program to celebrate all of your incredible work in multilingual journalism. You've worked against enormous odds to, to make sure our communities were informed about historic news events of the year from COVID-19 and the tragic murder of George Floyd to the movement for racial justice broadly defined to the November 3rd presidential election, the January 6th attack on the nation's capital and to California's vaccine rollout. The role you play in, in helping not only me, but all of our colleagues in government communicate with our constituents and for helping California's communities stay connected is crucial. You are key to sustaining an inclusive communications infrastructure that knits our communities together when so many forces, as you know well, threaten to drive us apart. So congratulations to the winners and thank you all for all that you do for the state of California. Thank you, Governor Newsom. Our hosts tonight are Odette alcazar Keeley and Pilar Marrero, both distinguished vet veterans of the ethnic media sector. Thank you, and hello everyone. What a powerful message for opening the awards. Thank you, Governor Gavin Newsom. I'm Odette alcazar Keeley, your co-host for tonight's celebration. The awards are deeply meaningful to me having previously served as chair of New America Media's awards program, and now as director of the Maynard 200 Fellowship to empower journalists of color. Tonight, we announce the winners of the California Ethnic Media Awards. We salute the journalists selected as finalists, and we celebrate the achievements of the entire sector during 2020, a year of epic events and epic challenges. In addition to the honor of being selected, each winner will receive an award of $1,000. Well, no wonder this was such a competitive contest. Pilar, it's a great joy to co-host with you. Wonderful to be with you tonight. It's a pleasure to share the stage with you, Odette. I'm Pilar Marrero, Associate Editor of Ethnic Media Services and also tonight's co-host. We received over 235 entries from journalists in print, digital, TV, and radio platforms in eight languages. Without your entries, Tonight's awards would not have been possible. To select the finalists and the winners, we called on judges who know the languages and cultures and the challenges of working in the sector. This was no small feat. We would like to recognize and thank our judges. We also want to thank our endorsers for sending tributes to ethnic media for the role it plays in your own work. Your recognition helps to inspire us all to move forward. Thank you, Pilar. And now for the winners in our first category, reporting about the 2020 census. We have tributes from two people who helped lead this Herculean effort to document California's diverse communities. Ditas Ketage, director of the state census campaign, and Arturo Vargas, CEO of the Naleo Education Fund. Ditas Ketage, director of the California Complete Count Census 2020 office. I just want to tell you how grateful I am for all the dedication and hard work for all the ethnic media outlets across the state. California ended up outpacing the entire country in terms of self-response rates with over 10.5 million households responding and 2.5 million of those households were in our hardest to count communities. That success was due to your partnership and your hard work and dedicated efforts to educate, motivate and activate our communities. I just wanna thank you again. This is my, was my third census, probably my last one. And we couldn't do it without you and we're not gonna be doing, able to reach folks to really educate them on how to have their voices heard. 
Thank you again. Take care. Congratulations to all the entrants and recipients of the 2020 Ethnic Media Awards. I'm Arturo Vargas, mm -hmm. Chief Executive Officer of Naleo Educational Fund. And I really want to give a special thank you to all the members of the ethnic media who helped promote a fair and accurate census. Without all of our efforts, this census may have gone down as one of the worst in the history of the nation. As it is, we know that the Census Bureau was incredibly challenged but we came together with your assistance to make sure that we could save the census. And in saving the census, we saved the foundation of our democracy, which is really one of the most important functions of journalists. De parte de Naleo, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, Arturo and Ditas. And the winner for English language print media is Rose Davis editor of the San Diego-based monthly Indian Voices, who begins her historical essay with the line, the census is about more than counting noses, and goes on to advocate for participation despite Native Americans being excluded by the census for centuries. Congratulations, Rose. And you have the floor, Rose, for your oh, acceptance thank you. speech. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, to my fellow journalists, especially Sandy Close, who's determination and dedication to the people have provided this opportunity for us to breathe together. As the great American experiment is being tested and the very structure of our democracy is being assaulted, the need for us for a strong force of state couldn't be greater. Words can be deadly or they can be life, life affirming. While the idle intellectual elite strive to cancel culture, we are tasked with the with the um, we are tasked with removing the knee off the throat of truth, and reaffirming and defining journalism in our own image. Our democracy is infused at a cellular level with the Native American influence and great uh, and great law of peace. This needs to be amplified and brought, to, uh, brought into the dialogue and for the insight of um, other of our fellow citizens for a national dialogue. No words or alternative facts can alter this reality. The swamp is yet to be drained as the reptilian brain gives way to the, to the uh, impatient collective consciousness that's been marinating in the, in the um, wings, eager to capture center stage. As we work toward the establishment of an indigenous media platform, let's keep on keeping on and cooperate with the ancestors. As Thank City you, Rose. Mayor, hello? Thank you. Thank you, Rose. We need to move on with the next winner. Thank you so much. OK. All right. The winner in the in-language print category is Araceli Martinez, veteran reporter for La Opinión, who documented a persistent but underreported fear among Latinos that they would go uncounted by the census and that they would be invisible. Congrats. Muchas felicidades, Araceli. You have the floor for 60 seconds. Go ahead. Felicidades. Gracias, Pilar. ¿Quieres decir algo? 60 minutes, 60 minutes, no, 60 seconds. <laughs> en español o en inglés? Whatever you want. Bueno, solamente darle las gracias a todo el equipo de Enid Media que ha estado trabajando incansablemente durante el último año eh, eh, durante la pandemia que toda esta crisis que hemos estado viviendo. Gracias, Pilar, Zunita, Jessica. Eh, Julián, todos ustedes, eh, espero pues que no se me escape nadie, pero en especial pues darle las gracias a, a, a Sandy porque durante mm -hmm. décadas ha estado apoyando a los medios étnicos y hasta ha hecho un gran esfuerzo porque nuestras, se nos reconozca y se nos respete mm -hmm. al igual que los medios en inglés. Así que muchas gracias por este reconocimiento. Okay, thank you, Araceli. She was thanking Ethnic Media Services for those of you who, who don't speak Spanish and, and um, particularly Sandy for her support for many decades 
uh, to the ethnic media sector. Okay, so let's move on. The winner in Language Broadcast TV is Crystal Liang with Skylink TV for reporting on community efforts to get everyone counted, especially in Chinatown, one of San Francisco's hardest to count neighborhoods. Congratulations, Crystal. You have the stage, you can talk. Hello. Hello, thank yes. you so much. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. And thank you so much for Ethnic Media Services for giving me this. And not only giving me this, but for opening a floor for to acknowledge all the Ethnic Medias, especially the work they've done, the extraordinary work they have done during this pandemic. And my thanks to Skyline TV and also Amanda Chen and Ying Xu for supporting me. We work as a extraordinary team without them I couldn't we couldn't finish accomplish all this during this pandemic and before and thank you so much yes indeed you are absolutely right thank you so much Crystal and congratulations the winner for English language TV coverage is Frank Blanquette with FNX TV based in Riverside for intimate conversations with Native Americans wrestling to fill out census forms while staying true through their tribal identities. Congratulations, Frank. The stage is yours for 60 seconds. Ba'ash kawalik, ink aba e Frank Blanket. Greetings, my name is Frank Blanket. Ni'i bulal, or dios botik. Those are two ways that you say thank you in my language, in Maya. Thank you to Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for putting these awards together. I want to thank my family, my parents, grandparents, uh, aunts, uncles, and elders who helped preserve and continue our indigenous languages. Uh, the, this particular piece could not have happened without the help of Buzz and Karen Wasler and the gay Catherine, uh, Kathy Peltier and my nephews, Jackson Zalen Blanquet, Patty Talhungva from Indian Country Today, Alyssa London, who created a culture story series, and FNX Television, the only Native American television channel in the US. How about that? An indigenous television network. Uh, without this community effort, we could not have made this piece happen. And I really want to emphasize the work of all my colleagues that are uh, offering a voice and representation to ethnic communities, especially our native and indigenous communities. Dios botik. Muchas gracias a toda mi gente. Thank you. Congratulations. And thank you, Frank Blanquette. And now for a second category, arguably the story of the year, the COVID-19 pandemic and its disproportionate impact on ethnic Californians. First, we have a tribute from Mayra Alvarez of Children's Partnership. Hi everyone, I'm Mayra Alvarez, president of the Children's Partnership. Our work every day is to advocate for the well-being of children in California, especially children from low-income families, families of color, and our immigrant families. As a proud daughter of Mexican immigrants, I am honored to do this important work every day and to do it alongside all of you. Our ethnic media partners have been instrumental in reaching communities across the state with critical information on health, immigration policy, COVID response, and more. Despite the multiple challenges you face, like the closure of small businesses or access to sources, or overcoming language barriers and having to cover multiple topics. You are experts in doing more with less. And you do it all while centering the lives of our families and keeping at the forefront the well being and health of our kids. Thank you. We see you, we appreciate you, and we applaud you for your incredible work. Muchas gracias, Mayra. And I'm pleased to announce the winner for In Language Print. And it's Kaylin Ngo with the Vietnamese Daily Nguy Viet for his cross-cultural story about a Vietnam-born doctor dedicated to serving impoverished Latinx communities along the U.S.-Mexico border. Congratulations, Kaylin. Hi, good evening. Please let me say thank you to Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for sponsoring this award. I would also like to share my appreciation to Nguyen Viet Daily News and with my college who've been working very hard to report unprecedented and challenging stories during the pandemic. A very special shout out to Dr. Tim Vo and his team for giving me a chance to tell a beautiful story and human story. This honor is definitely not just for me, but 
also for our community of Vietnamese journalists. Why many employees work from home during the pandemic, many dedicated reporters still have to head into the field to cover chaos and breaking news. So in some cases, life during a global health crisis has even led to aggressive behavior to reporters as they try to do their daily job. So thinking about this reminds me of the importance of freedom of press in the democracy. We still fail to cover challenges but we are all in this together. Thank you again and congratulations to everyone involved in this award gathering. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylin. Pilar, with Kaylin's and all of our winners' words, we just feel right through the Zoom screen the passion and the heart behind these stories. The winner in the English language category is Christina Oriel of Asian Journal among the first to highlight the dangers faced by Filipino healthcare workers. Her series includes a memorial to those transnational workers who died from COVID-19, and it's entitled, They're Not Even Naming Our Dead. Congratulations, Christina. Thank you, Odette. Um, thank you to Ethnic Media Services, California Black Media, and the Committee for the California Ethnic Media Awards for hosting tonight's event to acknowledge our sector's tireless work, especially in the past year when, as many other um, speakers have highlighted, that our work didn't stop, but um, it really um, just showed how important and life-saving a lot of our um, reporting has been. Um, my team and I recognized early on that this virus would take center stage in our reporting, given that many in the Filipino American community work in healthcare and other frontline essential industries. And secondly, as the broader Asian American community has been targeted and um, scapegoated for this virus, which continues to this day, um, I'd like to dedicate this award to our team the Filipino American community, but of course the subjects of the stories that um, were highlighted today, um, including Joshua Oprah, who is the 29 year old Filipino nurse who loved all things Disney, but he passed away from COVID um, last summer and his sister Jasmine for being so candid and trusting me to tell this story. Um, and secondly, um, Jolene Lovett, Minochka Rosta and the KenLugan.net team for providing this wonderful resource that helped disaggregate um, Asian American data and really help us track and um, see the statistics in Filipino Americans that we lost on the front lines. Um, and thank you again for this honor and um, congratulations to the fellow winners and finalists. And just seeing all of the winners here today is a testament to continuing the support for local and um, ethnic media, thank you. Thank you, Christina, and congratulations to you. The winner for in-language broadcast media coverage of COVID, it's a tie. Yurina Melara of Lo Nuestro TV for a one hour report explaining the pandemic early on to the station's Salvadoran audience, drawing on interviews with sources in El Salvador, Washington DC and Spain. Yurina, please go ahead, felicidades. Um, hello, so I am not the right person. Um, Bernardino should be the one giving out the speech. I'm just the one who submitted the, the proposal on behalf of Lo Nuestro. Um, can, can, we, can we go to Bernardino Claro? Go ahead, Bernardino. Okay, ahora sí. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, hi, everybody. My name is Bernardino Claro. I am the news director of Lo Nuestro TV. I would like to thank Ethnic Media Services for this award for Lo Nuestro TV team. We together a, a daily newscast with uh, every TV on its work of love. Uh, everyone, everyone who works at LN Noticias love our community and love to tell the that model to Salvadorian and Central American in the United States. Okay, thank you, Bernardino. We recognize uh, here is today from March 13, uh, 2021, born after that law for the truth. 
Okay. I recognize why uh, Turkey in 2020 was born out uh, that law for the truth. We want, we, we, we need to take our community about the COVID-19 and how it was affecting your life. Uh, knew this was the most important story. And we want to uh, tell it from all the possible angles that okay. why we put together a Friday, Friday night special newscast with uh, um, um, uh, empty grocery shelf and expert on the ground. Okay, Bernardino, muchas gracias. Necesitamos seguir adelante. Gracias. Okay, with the second winner is John Tai Tuan and Nok Lan of Little Saigon TV for stepping up. How the Vietnamese community mobilized to combat the pandemic, turning nail salons into sewing factories to make masks and restaurants into food pantries. Please go ahead. Please say hello. Hello, uh, my name is John Tai Bin with uh, Little Saigon TV. My name is Nok Lan. My name is Trisha, my wife, Vice President of Wilson TV. On behalf of Wilson TV, we are so honored to be here tonight and grateful to be the recipient of this award. Over the past 15 months, the pandemic has impacted the Vietnamese community. It has challenged us as a community to come together, to be united and strive to protect one another in the face of this health crisis and a rise in racism against Asian Americans. This award might have a name on it, but in true, it belongs to everybody who has worked to serve and bring the community together. This documentary video is credited to many talented individuals and organizations. It thanks to Kayla, also known as English, mailing it to America, Little Segment Foundation in San Diego, and all the volunteers who were making the mask and delivering the meals. We cannot individually name all the people who have been an integral part of our work, who will simply say thank you. You know who you are. Little Sub TV is proud to serve the Vietnamese American community. Our company slogan truly brings out our mission, proud in our heritage, committed to our future. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. Congratulations, John and Nock. Uh, and the winner for coverage of COVID in English broadcasts is Troy Aspera and Steve Angeles of ABS-CBN International, the Filipino Channel, for their Tayo Fam series aimed at informing and engaging young Filipinos about the impact of the pandemic on their lives. You have 60 seconds. I believe Troy, you're accepting. Rami Salamat, congratulations. And Troy, you have to unmute. Thank you so much to Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for creating this space to recognize us in ethnic media. This is such an honor for us, for our team behind Tayo News. And I'd like to thank my partners in this endeavor, Steve Angelis, our supervising producer, and our, edit our editor, director, John Santos. And of course, our host of squad, our squad of hosts, Nino Lanera, Nika Magahis. Trace Gaynor, Austin Castro, Rachel Cruz, and Kelly DeLeon. Great work, everybody. Thank you, and congratulations to all the winners and finalists tonight. Congratulations. congratulations again. Now for our third category, reporting on the economic crisis that exposed and exacerbated racial and economic fault lines in California. We have a tribute from Dr. David Hayes Bautista, Director of the Center for the Study of Latino Health at UCLA. Good evening. I'm David Hayes Bautista from the School of Medicine at the UCLA, and I'm here to congratulate the state's ethnic media for 150 years of productive service to our communities. The first Spanish language newspapers were published in, the, in 1851, the first Chinese language newspapers in 1856, African American in 1862. And for over 150 years, the ethnic media have helped provide the voice of the ethnic communities, giving their ethnic communities story, their narrative to the general public, and helping these communities remain connected with each other and with the rest of the state of California. And 
correcting the misinformation that has been circulating for 150 years about these communities. Thank you so much, Ethnic Media. You have been a crucial part of this state. That was a great tribute by uh, Dr. Hayes Bautista. And now the winner in English language print media is Mariah Brown and Chuck Bibbs Jr. from, from Black Voice News for their deeply researched and visually compelling report on how housing inequality has worsened as COVID pummels Black California. Mariah and Chuck. Thank you to Ethnic Media Services for this award and for empowering ethnic news outlets to engage diverse audiences and foster inclusivity. Thank you to Black Voice News, Stephanie Williams, Paulette Brown Hines, Chuck Gibbs, and the team who are on the boots on the ground in California. Thank you for supporting my work as a journalist and journalist of color. Thank you to my family and friends setting out to report on housing inequality facing Black Californians amid COVID-19, I wanted to introduce a narrative about why longstanding inequality around the most essential need housing is a persistent and compounded issue in Black California neighborhoods and in a state experiencing incomparable housing disparities, even more so now in the pandemic. I am grateful I was able to pass the mic and include a range of voices from the LA Tenants Union, small black landlords and nonprofits highlighting their agency amid the pandemic. They view it as a chance for lasting housing reform and not everlasting peril. Thank you all for this award. Um, the winner in in language media is David Y. Jian Wang, Sing Tao Davy for businesses counterattack in critical times, an inspiring story about the power of resilience, how several Asian businesses found an escape hatch out of the economic crisis. David Wuhyang Wang has 60 seconds to accept. You hear me? Hi, yes. this is Wuhyang Wang. Go ahead, please. Okay. 感谢少数主义媒体中心 EMS 对我工作的认可与鼓励。我从事新闻工作二十八年，很幸运，当我移民到美国，能够继续用我熟悉的语言服务我们的社区。我深刻的体会到华文媒体对于少数主义移民的重要意义。感谢《新岛日报》的推荐和帮助，也感谢我的妻子、儿子以及远在中国广州的父母和妹妹的支持和鼓励。在过去的一年，在过去的一年，由于病毒和外情绪的传播，华人社区小商业经历了更多的挑战。感谢少数主义媒体中，让我们有机会分享华人社区在抗议、在抗议反歧视和旧经济所做的一切努力和成果。我们不会停止我们的快门跟案件跟电本，期待我们的报道能够继续成为疫后福建家园的动力，也希望华人社区和其他土地的社区团结起来，让我们更加强大，最终战胜疫情和仇视。谢谢你对我工作的认可。Congratulations. With yeah. The winner for coverage by in-language broadcast is Jia Ya Li with Skylink TV for a story about Far East Cafe, one of San Francisco Chinatown's oldest restaurants slated to close due to the pandemic after 100 years. Jia Ya Li, please accept your award if you're around. There's a, yeah. No, I can unmute. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to the ethnic media service for this incredible recognition. I'm so happy to be here today with my colleagues um, to receive this award. Without their help, I cannot make this happen. I especially would like to thank my boss, Danny Wong, who teaches me and inspires me. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this journey with Skyling TV. It's not just about winning. It's about not giving up in a tough time. I've never fought 
to be a reporter speaking up for my community until I try. I made it. If you have a dream, keep fighting for it and make no regrets in your life. Thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations again. And with that, we are halfway through our program and about to hear from one of LA's leading voices on immigrant rights. That's so true, for that's just time flies with just three categories, um, such inspiring uh, words and inspiring work. And so we hope that all of you uh, stay on. And we are now in our fourth category, which is for exceptional reporting on immigrant rights during the relentless anti-immigrant policies and messages from the White House. We have a tribute from Rigoberto Reyes, head of the Office of Immigrant Affairs for LA County. Good evening. My name is Rigo Reyes. I run the Office of Immigrant Affairs for the County of Los Angeles, the second largest county in the nation. And over one third of the county's 10 million residents are immigrants. We face a huge challenge getting information to immigrant families in multiple languages to let them know about available services they need, but may be too afraid to apply for. Sandy, Regina, Ethnic Media Services, you are the bridge that links immigrant families to trusted and timely information they so much need. We couldn't do it without you. I'm here tonight to thank you, to recognize your dedication, and to celebrate the winners of the Ethnic Media Awards for your reporting on the census, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the rights of immigrants. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rigo Reyes. The winner in English language media is Eric Huerta with the online news site LA Taco for his report on the uncertain future of a swap meet in South Central LA where micro businesses struggle to serve their community. Congratulations, Eric. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, for your support. Thank you to Ethnic Media Services, California Black Media. Uh, you know, shout out to everybody on Team LA Taco who made this possible, Javier, Alex. This is a bittersweet award because uh, while I'm being recognized for my work, you know, it was at the cost of a community space uh, being lost. It's much needed in these trying times. So yeah, you know, bittersweet, but thank you everybody. Um, and special shout out to everybody right now that is, you know, we have to get along with the program. And there are some technical difficulties, but not everybody's getting their their spotlight. So special shout out to y'all. I can see it in the chat. You know, hopefully there's there's a space and time where y'all can come back and share your speech, and we can hear it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Eric. And and that is something that we're also working towards. Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, just mindful of of where technical challenges lie. But we, of course, understand, and this is so meaningful and so important to all of our honorees tonight. So we are addressing that situation. The winner in English language media is Han Li of the World Journal for his reporting on the efforts of Chinese DACA recipients to secure the rights of undocumented immigrants from all racial and ethnic backgrounds. Congratulations, Han Li. Hi, um, thank you, Ethnic Media Services, um, California Black Media for this award. Immigration has always been an important topic to the ethnic press. And of course, um, the stories of the immigrants, their struggle, their joys and tears, their hard work and achievement speak the truth of who we are. And I also want to thank my editors, Todd, Liu Yixin, Fudou, Hayo, uh, Daniel, Zhou Zhe, Zhuren, and especially the former chief editor of the World Journal San Francisco, Hong Mei Hui, who is now retired. Without their help, the story cannot be done. And finally, it's really my honor to be with so many fellow ethnic journalists here tonight who keep reporting for those underrepresented, marginalized, and voiceless communities, even under limited resources. Thank you all for the work, and I'm looking forward to many, many more great ethnic media reporting in the future. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Han Lee. The winners in English language broadcast media are Carl Johnson and Annette Naki Moli of Poly by Designs, Koviki Talk, spotlighting the urgent need for disaggregated data to bring visibility to the distinct cultures and ethnicities of Pacific Islanders. Carl or Annette, Carl, you have 60 seconds. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Faftai Mole Avanoa Sima. Ma uh, Odette, there's no way with this week being Samoan Language Week that I not open in Samoan, thanking Sima and uh, Odette for the opportunity. I want to thank the amazing players that made the Koviki Talk Show the true Pacific Islander media vehicle that it is today. The doctors, Dr. Nia Aito-Oto and Dr. Reno Samoa, the extremely patient APCHO team of Beverly Quintana and Christine Alarcon, and our sister from Epic, Tavai Samuelu. Our episode dealing with the disaggregation of data was a huge piece of the Pacific Islander community, making COVID-19 an opportunity to move forward and further steer our own ship by having our own data. Thank you, Carla Thomas and Esther Kiaina for being our guests on that show. Only one of us could talk today, so I'm missing my partner in crime, co-founder of Poly by Design, Miss Naki Moli. We started this thing in 2017 and did dare to dream that these good things would happen to us. I know you're watching. What's up, Naki? Last Thank you to all the Pacific Islander listeners that trust Naki and myself to bring you accurate, timely, and extremely important information. Your trust means everything to the entire Koviki Talk team. Thank you. Congratulations, Carl and Annette. And our fifth category is for coverage of the movement for racial justice, sparked by the murder of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. Highlighting the key role ethnic media working together play in this field is Vincent Pan, co-director of Chinese for Affirmative Action. Vincent. On behalf of all of us at Chinese for Affirmative Action, we want to thank ethnic media and ethnic media services for all that you do. Ethnic media plays such a vital role in making sure that every community has access to the information and news we need to live our lives to the fullest. Particularly now with disinformation and division on the rise, ethnic media gets the job done so that diverse communities can pursue a shared vision of truth and justice. We're so grateful for our partnerships and look forward to a bright future together. All right. And the winner in English language media is Julian Mark with the online news site Mission Local in San Francisco. For his investigation of the little known case of Morris Caldwell, whose murder conviction was overturned a decade ago, but was still labeled a killer by the city attorney. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, so sorry about this. We're in the we're actually having a mission local party right now. So the two things coincided. So my apologies, but I just want to say thank you to Ethnic Media Services. This is such an honor to receive an award for uh, a piece that took all of me as a reporter. It took all of um, you know my editorial support. We were taking on a very powerful city institution, the San Francisco City Attorney, uh, and brought criticism to an institution that has tremendous power and um, and you know brought to light a story that really was um, very much a, uh, an untold story of Black Lives Matter um, three months in the wake of uh, the killing of George Floyd as folks were rallying in the streets. Uh, this was about a man who lost 20 years of his life and who had to continue to uh, advocate for himself and continue to prove his innocence to gain some sort of justice from the system. And so it is uh, really just a tremendous honor to be receiving an award and to be recognized for uh, such a uh, you know such a piece that that took everything out of me uh, as a reporter and took every everything that I that I knew. So uh, thank you so much, and um, uh, you guys are great, and I, I just I'm I'm so honored. And that is the in language media on racial justice. The winner is Tien Le of the Vietnamese of the Vietnamese daily newspaper Angoi Viet for his interviews of multiracial demonstrators demanding justice for Mr. Floyd in Westminster. Tien, you have 60 seconds. Hello everyone, I would like to thank EMS for yeah. this incredible award. EMS for this incredible award. And so I had the opportunity to 
cover the uh, protest demanding justice for Mr. Floyd in Westminster it's because there was not a lot of mention um, of that topic in our area. And to be honest, I didn't really think that my entry would actually won because I, uh, I only started as a reporter like three years ago, like right out of college. So I'm, I am lacking a lot of experience unlike my colleagues here. And so uh, once again, I'd like to thank EMS for this award and I'd like to thank everyone at Nui Daily News for teaching me and helping me over the last three years. Without them, I wouldn't be able to write this story. Thank you. Congratulations again, Tian. It's a great work. And we're moving on to the next um, winner, and that is an English language broadcast TV, and that is Danny Morrison, AKA Danny Mo, a multimedia performer with Forge 103.9 in Bakersfield for entertaining and enlightening viewers with his reporting on the Black Lives Matter movement and his hard hitting interview with the Bakersfield police chief. Danny? Can you hear me? Yes, congratulations. I want to make sure as we're doing an acceptance speech for uh, God's work. Um, I got to give God all the praise for blessing me with the insights, uh, the platforms, and honestly, the struggle. Because without him, I'm nothing. Unmute. And from the gate, God has entrusted me to work hard at uplifting and inspiring as many people as possible, with him in the driver's seat and in full control. You see, I'm from Bakersfield, Kern County, and some call it the last conservative red bastion of California. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy's hometown, a man that I've never seemed to agree with. Also a city that if you go by the Guardian article from back in 2015, the city that just happens to have the deadliest police force in the nation. So as an African-American man in Central Cali, I've always known that we have a lot of work to do regarding the inequities within the ethnicities. So I've always known what my calling is. And it's also the reason why my team and I, we tour prisons and schools and churches and youth groups and more to speak to the underserved and the forgotten because we understand the struggle. Why? Because in most cases, we've actually been there. So for this recognition, for this love, I wanna thank the Ethnic Media Services, California Black Media, my family, my friends, my followers, and my supporters back in Bakersfield for always having my back. Even when the lights get too bright and the heat gets too hot, they still got my back. And I wanna thank the Cesar Chavez Foundation, and Bakersfield College, Beacon Studios, Junior Tobias, and now the Smiley Group and KBLA Talk 1580 in Los Angeles, where I am now, for believing in my talents and collaborating with us as we have the understanding that our voices can be a collective beacon of light for people of color in communities all across this country. Because Black lives matter. And I will work hard to reinforce that fact until my dying day. So thank you so much for this award and God bless you all. Thank you again, uh, Danny Mo, and congratulations. So the winner, we're moving on uh, to our next winner here. The winner in in-language TV is a tie. Truk Ho Trung of SBTN TV for his series on the generational divides within Vietnamese communities in California and Texas, spotlighted by the protests for racial justice. And Kion Kim of the Korean language station YTV American for coverage of the engagement of Korean Americans in the Black Lives Matter movement in Los Angeles. You have a 45 seconds Trukho Trong for your acceptance speech. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Ethnic Media Service and California Black Media for this wonderful award. I would like to congratulate all the winner tonight. I would like to thank all SPTN staff and reporters our job and work has not been easy this, this past couple year. We have gone through some up and down, but through those times, we perform our duty and serve our community and share the truth every day. And we will continue to serve our community in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Keon Kim your chance to speak and accept your award. Yeah, good evening, everyone. I'm Kim Kim, a reporter for a local news channel located in Koreatown, Los Angeles. First of all, it's an honor to attend the 2020 Ethnic Media Awards. It's a great honor, not only for me, but also for 
my news channel. I'm really grateful for co-winner of the racial justice category for in language TV with SBTM media. We white TV America received your clear message from the BLM protest held in Wilshire Square in Koreatown, Los Angeles last year, that everyone could become one. I can't forget the scene where hundreds of multi-ethnic protesters were all united under the slogan of no peace, no justice. I'm just a two year newbie here in America. I have seen and learned many things that I have never experienced in my home country, South Korea, in PRM last year and Asian hate crime this year. This is a problem for all of us and one that must be addressed. Once again, I wanna thank everyone here and hope that everyone can be on equal America. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anthony Media. Thank you. And congratulations again, Kiyun and Truk. And now for our sixth category, exceptional reporting on the impact of climate change. Our tribute is from John Christensen with UCLA's Institute on Environment and Sustainability. Hi, I'm John Christensen, and I teach and do research on environmental equity and access at UCLA. I'd like to congratulate the winners of this year's Ethnic Media Awards for the well-deserved recognition of your outstanding work. I'd also like to say thank you to all of the journalists working in the ethnic media today. Your work has been so important over the past year and will be so crucial for our common future. Poll after poll shows that your readers, viewers, and listeners, your communities, are more concerned than others about climate change and other threats to our common environment. And they vote accordingly to protect our environment and communities. You play a crucial role in forming and engaging your communities in the civic conversations and decision-making shaping our future. I wish I could say congratulations and thank you in all eight of the languages represented in submissions to this year's awards. But let me add in one of the languages I do know, gracias. Gracias. Uh, what a wonderful message. Thank you, John. Going on to the next winner. The winner for in-language print and digital coverage of climate change is Jorge Macias, writing for Univision Online, Univision, whose report, Devastating Forest Fire Surpass Record, combines interviews with data to document how drought has turned California into a combustible fire zone. Congratulations, Jorge. You have 60 seconds. Felicidades, Jorge. Felicidades. Muchas gracias, compañera. Okay, I am really pleased with this award. Uh, it means a lot for my career. Uh, everybody remember that during the last four years, we all suffered from the denial of climate change. And even in the moments of, of greatest terror in California, with these devastated uh, fires, I remember former President Trump said, science doesn't know. And he blamed the California fires on the accumula accumulation of, li of leaves and wood, and he still denied the climate change. So this, this prize for me means a lot because I expose those, those absurd words from this, pres from this former president. And, uh, and I think that as a human being, nothing was more absurd against climate change. But, uh, but now it's time to celebrate. And with this award, I would like to thank Sandy Claus, who I am called always my, my superhero, because she's the only woman in California who has been able to involve 3,000 ethnic news organizations who recognize the ethnic media. And for all of that, thanks to, to all of who works for uh, EMS, especially uh, Sunita, Pilar Matero, Odette, and Julian Do, who all will remember me to to come for the press conference. And thank you so much to all of you. It's very important for our communities, everything everything we do. And to all the winners, my love, my admiration, and congratulations to all of you. Thanks so much and God bless everybody. So go, moving on to the next winner, the winner for English language print media coverage is Giovanni Albanese Jr. with India West for his comprehensive portrait of Indian American wineries that escaped the worst ravages of the Napa fires. Congratulations, Giovanni. 
Well, thank you, thank you. I just wanna thank Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for putting this awards show together, uh, showcasing all these media outlets and the, the talented journalists and all their reporting on these vital stories that have to be heard. Uh, it, it, everything they're doing is great and uh, it should continue to happen for years to come. I want to thank India West, Ramesh, and Bina Mararka for giving me the opportunity to share uh, the voices of the Indian American community here. And uh, I'm certain uh, this would not be an award winner without my editor, Bina, who uh, used her sharp editing eye to uh, fix any errors and blunders that I gave her in the preliminary process. Uh, just to be named along with all these fantastic uh, reporters is an honor and I'm humbled to be selected among the winners. Uh, thanks again and congratulations to all the winners. Uh, thank you. Congratulations again, Giovanni. Thank you for your beautiful words. Well, uh, Pilar, we're asking everyone here on the Zoom room on the California Ethnic Media Awards 2020 to stay with us. Uh, not only are we about to present our final award winners for covering the elections and more, again, we're gonna hear some inspiring words really make sure that we recognize all of our honorees tonight. So thank you for staying on with us. And yes, Odette, and we are way ahead. We thought we were going to be late, but I think we're doing so well so far. Uh, we will have plenty of time for people to speak at the end who, hasn't been, who haven't been able to. And our seventh category is for coverage of the 2020 elections. To honor the ethnic media's role, we have a tribute from Thomas Sides, President and General Counsel, of the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Education Fund, MALDEF. Hi, I'm Thomas Sines, President and General Counsel of MALDEF, the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. As our nation emerges from this unprecedented pandemic, we have learned many lessons. But for me, one of the most important is recognizing the critical contributions of ethnic media, getting information and services out to communities that are not well served by the mainstream media. Here at MALDEF, when we look to inform the community about critical issues like the census, like voter engagement, like immigrant rights, like education, we look to ethnic media. The service that ethnic media provides is critical to our nation's future. Congratulations on these awards and thank you all for the critical service you provide to our community. And thank you to Thomas Sines of Maldives. Um, we have a tie in English language print media. Congratulations to Leslie Layton with Chico Sol, a veteran community newspaper now online for reporting the dramatic story of how Latinx Democratic candidates wound up getting elected in the, the town of Gridley in deeply red Buddha country through a grassroots door to door campaign. And the other winner is Ruslan Kursich of Slavic News, a Sacramento-based Russian, Ukrainian, and English platform in Sacramento for why refugees from the USSR are voting for Trump, a rare window into the role of homeland politics and evangelical churches among Baltic American immigrants. Leslie Leighton, you have the stage now to speak. Thank you so much, Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media. I am really honored to be here and to receive this award. When I moved to back to Northern California from Mexico in 1992, my husband, who is from Mexico, kept saying, this community needs a Spanish language newspaper. And that's what we set out to do to serve the, the Latinx immigrant community. And our audience is much broader now. And, you know, um, the communities we set out to serve are bringing change to the Northern Sacramento Valley. Um, we publish almost only in English, but we're telling stories that, that I think are really vital as are as the other ethnic media outlets. And uh, just a quick shout out to several of the people here who have donated, um, you know, generously so much talent Karen and Linda Joy and, and my daughter, Tanya, who all of them have to do all kinds of things. Um, and thank you, I think Media Services and Sandy and Pilar and Odette, thank you so much. And congratulations to my co-winner. I think that's wonderful. Thank you, Leslie. And Russell. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? 
Yes, yes. we have you fine. Uh, we are ready here at Slavic Sacramento, honored to be recognized by such organizations as uh, Ethnic Media Services. Our Russian speaking community in California and across the nation is underserved in regards of quality journalism today. Our minor community often struggles of lack of accurate information and a lot of times experiences misinformation and even disinformation. With assistance of such project as uh, Ethnic Media Services, our community and, and other immigrant communities in the state of California will definitely develop and thrive. We would not be able to deliver fair quality news content without such organizations. Thank you very much for your effort in supporting ethnic journalists. And especially thank you for Governor Newsom for recognizing ethnic media in these hard times. For in-language print media, the winner is Juan Esparza of Vida en el Valle for his portrait of Santos Garcia, the new mayor of Madera, a 63-year-old retired postal service worker who is unafraid of calling out his city's spending initiatives for overlooking the east side. Uh, thanks to the outstanding work being done by Sandy Close and the California Ethnic Media Services, uh, not only for honoring outstanding reporting, but in its strong and much needed support of ethnic media throughout the state. I'm honored to receive one of the awards being given today for reporting on uh, election on a piece on former farm worker and retired postal worker Santos Garcia, who won election as mayor of Madera. 10 years ago, there was only one Latino on the city council in a city of 67,000 where Latinos account for 77% of the population. So it's important for us to continue to do these stories that mainstream media either neglects or overlooks, uh, which is a, a, a significant segment of the state's population. So muchas gracias to all, all the uh, fellow winners as well. Thank you. Okay, the winner for digital broadcast media is Julia Dudley Najiat of Own Me News Media, a podcast in the Central Valley for coverage of the 2020 elections as they engage Fresno's black community. Julia, please go ahead. Thank you, Pilar. Um, pleasure to be able to be here tonight. And I want to thank Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for constantly advocating for the importance of ethnic media. Regina Brown Wilson, you are the true Olivia Pope in our industry. Um, the seat of On Me began with the mentorship from my late Fresno State professors, Dr. James E. Walton, encouraging me to be the editor in chief of the Black newspaper there. And the late Dr. Fleming telling me to embrace my creative side unapologetically. And if it was not for the advice I get from my dad, Julius Dudley Jr., I don't know what I would do without him every week, calling him any time of the night, any time of the day. And if it was not for the strong, encouraging media team and show host I have surrounding me, mentor, friend, and show host, Ken McCoy, wonderful on me team, team members and show host, Jaquia Murphy and Jordan Murphy, friend, mentor, and also on me team member, Wanda, Reverend Wanda Moore and spiritual mentors, Pastor B.T. Lewis and Dr. Binion. And if it was not for my life partner with, with me every step of the way through all the difficult times and through it all, Linus Najib, and if it was not for the supportive viewing and listening audiences, learning and accepting our voices from our black perspective, then on me would not exist today. So I am therefore humbly grateful and honored to accept this award for our on me team. Thank you. Congratulations, Julia, and thank you for your beautiful words. This is a great joy for me to introduce a beloved former colleague who truly had been the heart of the Ethnic Media Awards program, author and journalist Sandeep Roy, formerly of India Currents and New America Media, and he offers us this tribute from India. Hi, my name is Sandeep Roy, and uh, I call myself a writer now, but at one time, the most of the writing I did was of computer code. I was a software engineer because that paid the bills and growing up in India, that felt like a stable career, but I always loved writing. So when I worked in Silicon Valley, I really wanted to try my hand at it, but I had no journalism degree or a degree in English or an MFA. The first paper that took a chance on me was an Indian monthly called India Currents uh, that was published out of San Jose. They sent me to interview the son of a famous Indian film director, Shatiji Ray, whose birth centenary actually happens to be this year. It was on, it was this May. And uh, 
Then from there, I started volunteering as the editor of the world's oldest South Asian LGBT magazine called Tricone. We'd process mail, solicit articles, write editorials, answer letters to the editor, and mail out the copies from a living room in San Jose. Without ethnic media, I don't think I'd have had the courage to become a journalist, writer, and eventually quit my software job to pursue writing and radio full time. So congratulations to all the winners of the Me Ethnic Media Awards, not just because you tell the stories that would otherwise fall through the cracks, but on a personal level, because without ethnic media, I don't think I could stand before you today as a writer. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Sandeep, and what just wonderful to see and hear, uh, Sandeep. Um, I have to just share that in 2017, as I took the stage for the NAM Ethnic Media Awards, I borrowed Sandeep's always a vivid and, and just inspiring words of, of love to the ethnic media and say that this is your night. The winner for English language commentary is Stephanie Williams, editor of Black Voice News, for the remarkable way she connects her own experience with seemingly random news items to spotlight ways that minority voters are disenfranchised. Keeping it real, can you spell backwards, forwards? Great headline, Stephanie. Congratulations. Um, thank you so much. And thank you, Ethnic Media Services and the California Black Media for this honor. Um, I'd also like to take a minute to congratulate all of the other finalists in this category and uh, to give a special uh, note of appreciation to my publisher, Paulette Brown Hines, who entrusted me to uh, take over the column that was previously hers. There were big shoes to fill. And um, I always um, continue to appreciate that honor. Uh, in writing this column, it almost, it, I would say that it's probably the most enjoyable part of my week. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to color outside the lines, so to speak, and the tr speak the truth as I see it, with the caveat, of course, that it's just my opinion. Um, I'm sure that sometimes I ruffle feathers and, you know, I feel that's okay. At other times, I, I hope that there are like-minded people that are maybe giving me a mental high five. I enjoy that. And hopefully on occasion, there are readers that learn some new things others that may uh, read something that reinforces what they already know. And hopefully at times I inspire someone to take action on an important issue. Um, as you all know, I'm sure voter suppression is uh, historical and contemporary. And so whether we're spelling backwards forwards or counting jelly beans in a jar, or 14 elderly people to stand in the heat or the rain for hours to exercise their franchise. It's a journey that continues. And it is also a challenge that I believe we're up to meeting and one day defeating so that it is fair for everyone in this country. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations again, Stephanie and Black Voice News. Well, speaking of great headlines, here's another one. And the next winner for in-language print commentary, that's Nestor Fantini with the online platform Hispanic LA for his essay titled Bomb Agraba, which calls out fake news sites that plague Spanish language media and are at the core of a post-truth ideology and disregard for democracy. Congratulations, Nestor. Thank you, Odette uh, and Pilar, of course. Thank you, that giant of ethnic media, Sandy Close, Julian Doe, Jessica, Dina, Alexis, Celine, all the people that I work uh, with. Muchas gracias, uh, Gabriel Lerner, founder of HispanicLA.com. Uh, and also thanks uh, to the best proofreader of all, my wife, uh, Cecilia. My, my article is about the ideological struggle between factual reality and fiction. Scientific truths, as, as you know, are being presented as lies. And noble and courageous migrants are called rapists and criminals. So 
I want to honor those noble migrants. And I'm going to dedicate and donate my award to the Partnership for Central America that was recently co-founded by my son, Jonathan Fantini Porter, to address the root causes of migration from the Northern Triangle countries. And that only one week ago, got the support of Vice President Kamala Harris in a meeting held in the White House. To those migrants, all my love. So thank you so much, Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for this award. Bravo. Thank you, Nestor. Congratulations. And for such a courageous piece of reporting. Our next winner for this category for English language broadcast commentary is Henrietta Burroughs with East Palo Alto Today for bringing together diverse stakeholders each month for a robust exchange of opinions and commentary, including her own. Congratulations, Henrietta. Thank you so much, Odette. This is indeed an honor to be among 200, to be among 20 awardees out of a total of 230. It has been a long, challenging journey since I started the East Palo Alto Center for Community Media in 2003 to create media outlets in the East Palo Alto community. But the journey presented an opportunity to share important and critical information with the community. There have been many rewarding highlights along the way, and this award is one of those highlights. And I'd like to thank all of the guests who participated on my show and also the judges. Many thanks goes to Sandy Close, Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for making this award ceremony and my award possible. I'd like to give a special thanks again to Sandy and Ethnic Media Services for making all of our media collaborations possible especially our Friday briefings. And all of our media organizations are stronger because of ethnic media services efforts in bringing us all together. So many, many thanks to all of you who are here this evening and all best wishes. Thank you, Henrietta. And you're right, uh, all the nominees tonight and, and the winners are a very inspiring group and um, uh, it's, it's really amazing to see them all here together tonight. And we're moving on to our next winner for in-language broadcast, and that is uh, my friend Ruben Tapia with Radio Bilingue for shining the light on years of community protests against ongoing lead contamination from Exide's battery recycling plant in East LA and how much remains to be done. The series is part of Noticiero Latino and produced in collaboration with the School of Journalism at USC. Ruben, bienvenido. Felicidades. No, pues un honor este, eh, eh, estar aquí con ustedes, eh, Pilar, mucho gusto, y también otros colegas que han estado pasando antes que yo. Uh, I'm very pleased with uh, this award. Thank you to uh, Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for granting this award. And particularly in these times when, uh, you know, what happened in, in this lead contamination by the excite has been obscured by the pandemic, but it's still present and it's still affecting several Latino cities and particularly the most vulnerable, which are the children. And I'm pleased too, because the struggle to clean up this contamination, it is not over, you know? So I think uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, this uh, was a, a radio piece because you know the radio, the commercial radio didn't care much about these social issues, but uh, we need, uh, I hope that, uh, you know, it can be covered more because excited is just one example. Uh, I, there's more um, sites, uh, dangerous sites um, around uh, community barrios in, in, in LA County and other parts that needs to be exposed. Uh, and uh, also I want to thank uh, the UC Annenberg Center for Health Journalism who support uh, me to produce this, this uh, report. Gracias a Michelle Levander, uh, which is a direct, this very important project, you know, helping journalists, you know, to, to develop more in-depth coverage. And also to my mentor, the veteran, the documentary radio produ producer, Catherine Stiffer, 
uh, was very helpful to, to produce this piece. And also, of course, to Radio Bilingue, uh, which uh, the team uh, that Radio Bilingue uh, gathered to support me, and they embraced me as part of their staff. And, uh, and under the leadership of its founder, Hugo Morales and Samuel Orozco, our news director, I'm very pleased to be part of this team. And also, uh, at last but not at least, uh, I want to dedicate this award to my wife, my family, my wife Betty, my two daughters and two sons and two granddaughters, and uh, my dear mother Lupita and Pedro, who already passed away, but you know they are in my, in my soul and my blood, and uh, they all always support me, despite the fact that sometimes I miss some family gatherings because of my passion for community radio. But you know, I'm pleased to be part of this. I didn't have the, the knowledge of the, the, um, um, the very important job that these uh, two organizations do to promote the ethnic uh, um, journalism. So I'm very pleased. Thank you. Gracias, Robin. Thank you very much. OK, um, we are moving forward uh, with our ninth, ninth award category that recognizes innovation in the sector. Before presenting our award, we will have a tribute by John Masaoka of Cal Nonprofits. Hi, Jan Masaoka here. I'm the CEO of the California Association of Nonprofits. And along with ethnic media, the nonprofit community not only serves our communities, but also speaks for them, stands up for them, and represents them. Congratulations to all the awardees. The work that you're doing is so important, and you know that nonprofits are frequently partners with you. Let us know how we nonprofits and you can continue to work together even more. Thank you. The award for innovation goes to three Oakland-based organizations as co-recipients of a special media innovation award. All have launched within the last three years to serve communities that have historically been underrepresented in Oakland's news media. Radio Balam provides online radio programming in the indigenous language of Mam, Kachikel, and Kiche. El Timpano, Spanish for eardrum, serves Oakland's Latino and Mayan immigrants via SMS text messaging. The Oakland side, an independent nonprofit newsroom, covers daily news, resources, and information. It's a remarkable collaboration. Thank you so much for your work. Um, we are extremely honored to be receiving such an important ethnic uh, uh, media award in California Black media. As member of indigenous Maya mom uh, community, it's very important that we respectfully acknowledge that we study, work, and live on the traditional ancestral and unceded lands of the Ohlone people. We are sincerely thank Madeline, Cesar Cruz, Carmen, Alto, Crescencio, and Homeless and Power for helping us uh, reach a stage where we can proudly hold up this award as a mark of our achievement. Thank you, Chonte, we insist we exist. Thank you. Um, I, I founded El Timpano four years ago so that the diversity of the city that raised me and the city that I love is reflected in local media. And it is such an honor to receive this award. Um, El Timpano really would not exist without our community. And so this is really for the hundreds of Latino and Mayan immigrants who have supported El Timpano, who told me to keep going despite the challenges, who have joined our team, who trust us with their stories and questions week in and week, week out. Henry is one of those individuals and it is a true joy to share this honor with him um, as well as with our friends and partners at the Oakland side. And so thank you so much Ethnic Media Services um, and congratulations to all of my peers tonight. Congratulations to our latest honorees. And, um, but right now, just moving forward with uh, the judges uh, special commendation, special award for an outstanding cross-cultural essay. And before we announce the winner, we have a tribute to Native News Media from Ricky McCarroll of Nuna Consulting. Hi, 
Dr. Kimi Carroll from Munich Consulting Group here. Just want to say congratulations to all of the winners tonight for the Ethnic Media Services and the California Black Media Ethnic Media Awards. Uh, so many of you in this room helped to raise me in my career um, and are some of the best storytellers we have in Indian country. And so I just want to say congratulations to you and thank you so much for teaching me how to do my job um, and making sure that tribal stories from the ground are heard. Thank you so much to Ricky. The winner is Jean Ferris with a quarterly journal news from Native California for her essay on the converging paths of Native tribes and of Japanese American citizens incarcerated in reservation lands in World War II. Such a hidden story, Jean, congratulations. I am completely honored and so surprised. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank uh, California Ethnic Media Group. Thank you for upholding the First Amendment, free press, and this special commendation. Congratulations to all the winners. I would also like to um, thank Taria Smith, editor extraordinaire at News from Native California Magazine. Thank you to Marina Drummer, champion of civil rights, who entrusted me with this story. To Carly Tex, language whisperer and executive director with Ad Advocates for Indigenous California Survival. And I'd like to dedicate this um, um, commemoration to all the children, women and men who endure tremendous trauma and cruelty from forced um, trauma and cruelty from forced removal and incarceration. Peace be with you. And to the California Ethnic Media Group, thank you for upholding um, this, this great award. I appreciate it. And I'd like to say um, to, to all the winners, we, we are important to what all the viewers on this planet need to hear. And thank you to um, Heavenly Father and Divine Mother for without them, we are not here. Just wanted to thank again, Jean, for such a courageous piece. I wanna call out for the next commendation, Tony Lai of Camera TV for being the poet of ethnic media writing poems instead of editorials to persuade his audience to get vaccinated. Tony. Now, thank you very much. And uh, first I want to thank Sandy and everyone at Ethnic Media Service for setting up this award ceremony. I also would like to thank the governor for guiding us through the pandemic, not only resulted in saving lives, but also got us vaccinated quickly and efficiently. I'm sure that all of us know that a normal conversation, people usually travel into one ear and exit the other. <laughs> but if you tell a story, write a poem with rhyme, it would not only resonate in their mind, but it also make them want to listen again and again. I'm not a poet. <laughs> I'm just a regular guy. But if I think about something, I can actually spit it out. It can get it happen. Finally, I want to thank my wife and her family and all the friends that have helped Khmer TV to stay on air for over eight years and counting. And we also want to thank all the viewers out there that have watched us since inception. Without all of you, we wouldn't be here. Thank you and thank you all the co-hosts. Have a great night. Thank you so much, Tony. And uh, congratulations on your creativity on that one. And uh, we salute Danish Gupta of Siliconier as a representative of the next generation dedicated to sustaining the family enterprise. Vansh Gupta? Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. A big thank you to Ethnic Media's very own Florence Nightingale Sandy Close. Thank you to the judges, to the EMS team, and thank you to my parents for being my free electric charging system. It's a huge win for Silicon Year, the world's first South Asian digital daily out of Silicon Valley. The Gen Z platform was pioneered to build a dialogue for the torch bearers of tomorrow today. It is our responsibility as media outlets to empower 
and encourage the Gen Z. We strive to give them that voice. We are elated to be a part of this award-winning club and we sincerely hope this movement flourishes with time. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, Pilar. That was seeing two generations of ethnic media and Vanj representing the next generation for sure. Well, how miraculous is this that we are actually right at 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern, right on the time we have caught up. And now that we're down to the wire, we of course have to have a fitting close to this special celebration. And that is to hear from our award sponsors, Regina Brown Wilson of California Black Media and Sandy Close of Ethnic Media Services who have been for many years at the forefront of amplifying the voice and change agency of the ethnic media sector. Shall we let them have the last word? Well, thank you so much. I don't wanna keep you long, but I wanna just definitely say uh, thank you to all the journalists, the reporters and editors, photographers, publishers who work long hours without recognition every day. You're committed to telling stories and covering unreported and underreported stories that we would otherwise not ever hear. It is your love for news and community and enduring commitment that makes this evening possible. And to Sandy Close, I just have to say she's the goat at this point because I am so blessed that I get to sit at her feet and watch and learn from her. And she is just a true member. Uh, she's a true uh, uh, mentor to me. I like to thank my father who was the founder of California Black Media. I know I saw him on. Um, and all, you know, and I want to just congratulate everyone who submitted, um, who made this night possible, who won, uh, who didn't win, but, but still submitted the work. I'm so committed now more than ever uh, to, to, to keep doing this work and to keep actually the award show going. This was Sandy's brainchild and I just, I'm happy that she allowed me to be here and, and, and enjoy the ride. So Sandy, thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to learn from you. Thank you. Look, uh, let's see if this is the, well, this is just an amazing evening and truly an inspiration for me for another year. Ethnic media coming together with community leaders and stakeholders to celebrate not just their own but each other's awards. This is the takeaway for tonight and it sets the agenda for all of us engaged in communicating with California's diverse audiences. We do it together to quote Chauncey Bailey, like fingers on a hand. When we do it together, we become a fist. The challenges are immense, but as governor Newsom put it, we're more indispensable than ever. Here's to another year of working on the edge. And maybe next year, we'll do it nationwide. Thank you, blessings to all of you. You've made a terrific impression on all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Regina. Congratulations, Ethnic Media Services and California Black Media for such an inspiring salute to the ethnic media sector. Congratulations to all the honorees, all the finalists, all the submitters. Pilar, it was such a great, great pleasure to be with you. It was a privilege for me to be your co-host tonight. And now for the last, last word, everyone, please know you can stay on the Zoom platform to see the tributes from elected officials and community stakeholders that you may have missed, as well as the names of our finalists. I'm Odette Alcazar and Keeley, and with Pilar, hope Pilar yes. can be able to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your That's work. It's to very inspiring you. to have colleagues like you. Good night, and thank you for joining us. And again, please enjoy uh, these videos of tributes. Good night from all of us, the California Ethnic Media 2020 Awards. Night.
My name is Kayla Hilario, and I was the Tribal Affairs Specialist for the California Complete Count 2020 Census. I'm a member of the Ion Band of Miwok.